Duncan, Duncan Pitaway, this is my 1963 Chevrolet Cheetah. Most people don't know what a Cheetah is. Um, they were built by Chevrolet in the beginning of 63 to beat the Cobra, the AC Cobra, because the Cobra had won and blown the Corvette away in 62. It was the fastest thing in road racing in America. Chevrolet tried to beat the Cobra with a lightweight Corvette called the Grand Sport and built four or five of those. And then the Grand Sport still wasn't quick enough to beat the Cobra, so Bill Thomas, who was like a Chevrolet equivalent to Carroll Shelby, as, as he was to Ford, Bill Thomas said, I can build you a car that will beat the Cobra. And this is it, this is the, the Cheetah. Um, the idea was to build a hundred and to race them in the production sports car class against the Cobra. And this was the first of the two prototypes, aluminum body prototypes, chassis number one. Uh, they raced and tested them at, uh, at Riverside in the end of 63. And to Shelby's surprise or shock, um, Bondurant drove one of these cars and he was a second half quicker than Dave McDonald, who was a hero. Dave McDonald was like Jim Clark of America. So he was the second half quicker than Dave McDonald's Cobra. Everybody sat up and thought, ooh, hit by me. And I think Road and Track magazine, I think, at the end of 63, he said, look out, Shelby, you know, next year, Chevrolet's coming with the Cheetah. Um, miraculously, uh, the FIA changed the rules, <laughs> and for production sports cars, uh, it's, they changed the rules from, from 100 to 1,000. And as soon as that happened at the beginning of 64, Chevrolet just pulled the plug, because they couldn't build 1,000 to be, to be uh, competitive as production sports cars, which is a great shame. I mean, there's a bit of gossip that maybe there was some sh shenanigans behind the scenes, who knows, but... The idea was what better way of getting rid of your competition than getting shoved into another class. Bill Thomas was really clever. He he built Dan Gurney's engines for his race cars. He was a, he was like I say he was a proper clever race engineer. He had a Lotus 23 in his workshop and they decided to copy all the front suspension for the Lotus 23 because they knew it worked. It had to be front engine, had to be two seats, they had to carry a spare wheel and a suitcase. But to get the weight distribution as far back as possible, Bill decided not to bother with a prop shaft and they connected the gearbox to the diff. So the engine is right in the middle of the car. The driver sits between the back wheels, so the driving experience is a bit unnerving, but the weight distribution is the same as a GT40, so he, he was ahead of his time about getting weight distribution right. The only slight problem with Bill Thomas is, like a lot of Americans in 63, they just didn't really make a big So, 180-mile-an-hour sports car, it, um, sadly, is on drum brakes all round, which is... Uh, I've tested it at Donington, apart from fuel injection problems, Every lap, I'd, I'd need the runoff area into the chicane because the, because I get terrible brake fade. So it doesn't bathe terribly well for today. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. But um, the astonishing thing is lightweight. It's 100 kilos light in the Cobra. So with me in, all up, it's about just under 800 kilos. Uh, the chassis weighs 30 kilos. It's, it's insanely light. It has all the really unpleasant uh, characteristics of a 1960s Formula One car, i.e. you're sitting in a metal tube frame surrounded by fuel. It's got gullwing doors. Rather groovy. A bit crude, but very light. Um, one of the side tanks, another one on the other side, another one on the back. Um, nothing at all, no driver comforts. It's really hot because the exhaust pipes go over the top of the footwells and down the side, under the fuel tank, warms the fuel up nicely, which is not a good idea. Uh, it's got rack and pinion steering because they had a Lotus it's got steering from a Triumph Herald because that was the Americans thought it was amazing but because they knew the Lotus had fantastic steering they copied all that um, that's about it really the only, the only thing that's, that's, that was a problem was the independent rear suspension Americans weren't good with independent rear suspension they hadn't done that before they all had live axles and Don Edmonds the guy who designed the chassis He's still alive, and I chatted to Don about it, and he did admit it was the first independent rear suspension car he designed, and it does have a few handling issues, but we'll find out later on today what that's going to be like. But it, like I say, in its day, if they could have run it in the production class, it would definitely have beaten the Cobras. Um, it's, it's sadly, at Daytona, it wasn't running in their class, but it was in the same race with Inns Island and Graham Hill in 250 GTO Ferraris, and Dave McDonald and a Cobra. And it was, it was ahead of them in the race before it crashed. Uh, but of course it was running against the Chaparrales, the Genies, in fact the, the, the Lola T70s, that sort of car. And it just couldn't compete. And sadly that was the end of the Chiefs' story really because Chevrolet just pulled all the funding.
the time shoot out is basically what all of us wait for. You know, the time shoot out is one of the things we all wait for. And it's when the time when you can really prove whether you can do what you've been claiming you could do in the bar for the last two nights. Oh yeah, we can definitely do a 58 mil second run. Yeah, 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 sure. Now's the time when you can show with your can and shake off. And it's not raining. It was supposed to rain at four, so if it doesn't rain, then it should be really good.